So if you ask anybody who is heavily invested into Diamond Dynasty what the most frustrating feature of the entire game mode is, chances are they're going to say something about the creative player. As you know, in Diamond Dynasty, you can create a custom player that you can put on your team to go with all the legends and all the current players in the MLB, and he basically is your own guy. Now this could actually be a really cool feature, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of your custom touch on your team. The problem is it has to be done in a balanced way, and the past two years of Diamond Dynasty, it has not been balanced. It's been way too easy to make your guy a 99 overall, and he basically becomes the best player in baseball history with little to no effort involved. In today's Diamond Dynasty livestream for MLB The Show 18, San Diego Studios went over the new created player structure and how they're going to be addressing the issues that have been happening in MLB The Show 17 and 16 to balance the entire created player system. Before we talk about the upgrades and the changes that they've made, you have to understand why creative player was so unbalanced. The main problem with creative player is that he was so easy to upgrade. It took little to no effort. There was no gameplay involved. All you had to do was feed cards to the player and then he would basically absorb those cards, take their stats, and it would feed into his own. Most of the good players had 99 overall Diamond Dynasty players within the first few days of the game. Not only was he a 99 overall player, he was basically the best player in the game at every single position. He could play catcher just as well as he could play second base, just as well as he could pitch, just as well as he could play the outfield. It literally made no sense. So here is the way that MLB The Show 18 will combat that and try to make the creative player a much more enjoyable experience for everyone around. Most of Diamond Dynasty this year is going to be funneled through programs. There are programs for the Immortals, there are programs for the Career Arcs, there are collection programs, there's team epics, there's individual player programs, and you have the creative player programs. What we're actually going to get this year is you can have 10 different creative players. You can have a catcher, a first baseman, second, third, short, left, right, and center field, a starting pitcher, and a closing pitcher. Don't worry, you cannot have all 10 guys on your team at once, but you can customize 10 different creative players this year. And basically, you are going to be upgrading your player at each different position over time. I'm going to let the clip play where Ramon, Luis, and Steven are talking about this new system. They're going to talk about a specific feature called archetypes, which I want to highlight, which is really important. So let's go ahead and let this clip play, and then I'll discuss a little bit after it's done. Let's right. give them strengths and weaknesses, like Luis said in the video. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we call those archetypes, right? So he'll have strengths and weaknesses at every of these positions. And at the same time, he can't play every position. You got to only have a catcher, uh, creative player. Then you got to do your first mm -hmm. base program for creative player. Now, while you can earn all of the positions, you don't just have one player that can be the best at everything. You have yeah. every single position. You've got a pitcher, a catcher, first, third base, center fielder. Right. Yep. So before we go into the program, let's just talk about the archetypes real quickly. Um, I don't have a graphic for this, but hitters, all right? So listen up, hitters. The archetypes that you'll generally see through the positions are power, contact, balanced, speed, and fielding. So power, contact, balance, speed, and fielding are the typical archetypes. Not every position has all five of those, but those are the common ones you'll see throughout. Right, like you won't find a catcher speed right. archetype. Mm -hmm. Unless we're talking about real Muta, right? Yeah, <laughs> real no. Muta, he's one no, of the kind. But you're right, speed won't be one of the catcher archetypes that we're about to take a look. Pitchers, go ahead. You can't have an all creative player team. Right, and you can only have right. <laughs> <laughs> same, same rules yeah. apply. Same rules apply. You get to put one, one, one creative player on right. your team. You can't have a full creative player team. <laughs> right. Go on and squash that right now. All right, so hitters, power, contact, balance, speed, and fielding. And then when it comes to the pitchers, uh, the way that we're breaking down is break, velocity, and control. Break, velocity, control. So what that means, break is about the hits per nine, having a really you know tough hitter uh, pitcher to hit against. Velocity is, translates into a high K per mm -hmm. nine, strikeout per nine, a lot of swings and misses. And then the walks per nine guy is, is the control pitcher. So break, velocity, control. So the archetype system is actually a really great idea. It models your creative player after a specific type of baseball player. You're no longer going to be able to have a catcher who can run, hit, and field. You're no longer going to have an outfielder that can also come in out of the bullpen whenever. Each player is going to be balanced or at least modeled after a certain build of a player. I personally really like this feature. This is something that I actually wanted to 
PC. This is one of the ways that people kind of suggested to upgrade the creative player to make it a much more balanced system. So I am definitely a fan of that. So as you get further along in the program for your creative player, you're going to have to take different decision paths. You have to make a decision on what you want to be, which dis which way you want to go with your career, which way you want to kind of focus. Do you want to focus on power? Do you want to focus on contact? Once again, I'm going to let this clip play and then I'm going to talk a little bit after it's done. You're going to start on a linear path where everyone gets the first player. I think it's like a common, like mm -hmm. 65 or something. And then the next reward will be the 70, the 75, the 78. And you're kind of thinking, all right, I guess we're all going on the same path towards the same kind of creative player. So how do these archetypes work? Yeah, how, does, how do I well, make these choices? Oh! <laughs> you get to this point of like 70 or 90% here where you have these catcher decision tokens where the archetypes split off. And Kyle kind of put this together. So let's take a look at the missions that these require. So the catcher right here, you got some stats missions, uh, like overall kind of stat and uh, play innings with this guy. Then you got some single game <laughs> stat missions where it's a couple hits with that 65 overall guy that you're gonna get. And then you get to these decision points. But real quick, on the far right, look at the art. You see we've got the brown, uh, the bronze circle kind of highlighted right there. And then you have a 70 overall on the right bottom right. Well, that's actually baked into the art. It's kind of cool. That's telling you this is the reward you're working towards, right? So mm -hmm. now when we get down to the decision of power or contact, boom, it just changed to an 85 in the bottom right. Mm -hmm. We're not blocking it. Yeah, it's right here. So it's 85, and you can see this is one of your paths, which is focused on power, as mm -hmm. it says, right? And you see all the information right up front to make your decision, do I want to go power or, or do I want to go down? and Go see contact. contact. So you have, we'll flip between the two. We have a 60s contact guy with 80s power, and then it flips, 80s contact, 50s power. So those attributes are, are um, you know, that's the essence of the player, but then what about equipment, you know? Equipment, right. So we'll get to about what is the max for a player. And right here, so here's another decision point, and this is, <coughs> this is the max overall for a player, which is 89 overall, mm -hmm. and then you can add equipment on top of that. So then right. you can decide, do I want to double up and go for even more power than this 90 or more contact or something else. Mm -hmm. And another new distinction for a creative player, last year, remember, you were just feeding and you just mm -hmm. sit that guy until you got him to 99 and then you start right. playing him. You got to play your guy from day one to start working on the working on his program so you can get to right. this tree. Right. So you can't just wait. So you got you got to put that 70 overall rated catcher in the game. Right. Or that 70 you're, rated overall first baseman. You got to play with them. And you're gonna have a story to tell, you know, because you're gonna you know you're gonna play with the guy a lot more than than you did last year. Right. So let's talk about the second decision point real quick, and this is to max out your creative player. So top right, you're seeing the the kind of blue diamonds move up and down. These are your paths. And then you're seeing, okay, this is what I could work towards if I go down this path. So in every position, uh, create a player program, you'll see what is the best I can get, which path do I want to go down, and then you work towards there. However, once you decide to go down one of these paths, there's no turning back in this program, okay? So if you decide to go power focus one here, and then you continue on power focus two, you continue on that path for good, all right? That catcher, this is gonna be the catcher you get, all right? You're not gonna be able to go back, Can't go back. and do a balance that, and a contact. That contact right? is locked. It's gonna stay right there. You can't increase it unless you have equipment right. that can increase those attributes. And let me just do a real quick comparison from 17 to 18, what this means. Like last year, you could have a catcher with that best at everything, best at anything kind of creative player, 99 power and 99 speed at mm -hmm. catcher. This year, uh, we're kind of looking at one of these here, but the best you can have is 90 power and I believe, let's see, 40 speed. Yeah, it's right there on the he, screen. He gonna be slow. And again, you can, uh, you can put some cleats on him, you can put a, a batting glove or whatever, and depending on the equipment attributes we add into but, Diamond Dynasty. But you won't get him close to Real Muto speed. <laughs> <laughs> no, can't do it. No, JT Another, Real Muto is uh, very key and important <laughs> yeah. uh, question about the new cap. Yep. Do they have secondary positions? Do caps have secondary positions? Well, actually, we can go take a look at one. Let's take a look at the 82 overall. No, the answer no. is no. There are no secondaries, no secondaries with the creative player. For creative player. So, so there you go, man. You're going to be seeing your career path on the right side of the screen. You're going to be able to see what you might be looking like as you keep progressing. I think that's a very, very good feature added in. It adds a story element, which I think is really cool. It almost adds a little bit of a road to the show feature in Diamond Dynasty. You have to choose which direction you want to go. Do you want to focus on power? Do you want to focus on contact? Do you want to focus on 
on being more of a fielder. Like, I really like that. I think that's super cool. It encourages decision making. It encourages strategy. I think that's a really smart feature. Also, the creative players are going to be capped at 89 overall, but if you want to put on equipments to your guy to even boost up his power more or boost up his speed or whatever it is, you can do that. So they're going to stay at an 89 overall, but with equipment being put on your player that you can earn through card packs or off the market or whatever it is, you can improve his overall. It just will still say he's at an 89. So that is the new creative player system. Guys, I'm a huge fan of this. I really am. This to me is the best thing they've added for Diamond Dynasty so far. I really like how they're approaching the creative player system. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Are you a fan of this? Did you like the old way better? Are you going to be, you know, going for all 10 positions? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. But anyway, guys, drop a thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy this. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more MLB The Show 18 news. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Peace.